So at this point, we've talked about the energetics of forming solutions. We've talked about the effects on solubility for various materials, solids and gases, pressure effects, intermolecular interactions, and temperature effects. But now we need to spend a little bit more time talking about units of concentration. You may wonder, why do we need to spend more time talking about this? We did molarity back in chapter four. Isn't that good? Well, it turns out that there are more units of concentration than simply molarity. And there are good reasons for that. There are many cases when we are talking about extremely dilute solutions where using molarity is not a good measure for concentration simply because we would have an, uh, such a large negative exponent. And there are other units that are a little bit easier or more practical. So when we talk about units of concentration, there are actually two types of units. There are mass units, or units that relate to mass, and there are mole units, or units that relate to the mole. They're not just mass or mole, but units of concentration that relate specifically to mass or to mole of the solute. So let's look at a couple of those. First, we'll start with the mass units, and there's three common units here. The first is just a mass percent. And this is defined as the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution times 100%. So this is exactly similar to any mass percent that we did back in chapter three when we were doing combustion analysis or anything like that. It's just now we're dealing in solutions. So it's the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution times 100%. We also have two other common ones, PPM, which is known as parts per million. Parts per million is simply the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution. And then that fraction, rather than multiplying by 100%, it's multiplied by 1 million. So we figured out the parts, and then we multiply that by a million. So it's parts per million. Parts per billion is another one that we use for extremely dilute solutions, and this would be the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution times 10 to the ninth, or 1 billion. So really quickly, let's just uh, make some notes on these three mass units, and we can do a, a brief example that may be helpful. So a 2.5 gram sample of groundwater is found to contain 5.4 micrograms of zinc ions. And this is where, if we were to calculate the molarity, this might not be super helpful. So we're asked, what is the concentration of zinc 2 plus in parts per million? Well, the first thing I have to do for parts per million is it's mass of solute divided by mass of solution. But I need to make sure that my mass units are the same because parts per million and parts per billion don't have any units associated. The units have canceled out. So, uh, so what I have here then is I need to take my micrograms and convert that to grams. So I'll take 5.4 micrograms and divide that by one times 10 to the sixth micrograms per one gram. So that gets me to grams and then divide that by the mass of the solution, which is 2.5 grams, multiply that by 10 to the sixth and we come out with 2.16 parts per million. You could do something very analogous for parts per, for parts per billion or for mass percent. So now we need to talk about mole units. And again, there's three here that are pretty common. The first is something known as mole fraction. We'd encountered this in chapter 10 when we were talking about gases, but a brief refresher here would be helpful. So, in terms of solution specifically, the mole fraction of the solute is defined as the moles of the solute divided by the total moles of the solution. There's no multiplying by 100% or by 10 to the sixth or anything like that. It's simply the moles of solute divided by the moles of solution. Molarity, we're already pretty familiar with. That's simply moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So we did a lot with that back in chapter four. We should be familiar with that. But then there is one other unit that sounds very similar to molarity, but has some uh, very significant differences, and that is molality. Molality is sometimes more useful than molarity, and we'll explain why in a moment, 
but molality is given the symbol little m, and molality is the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent. So it's not kilograms of solution, it's kilograms of solvent, and it's a mass unit now. So here you'll notice that the numerator for all three of these units is moles of solute. It just differs what the denominator is. Now, why might we want to use molality rather than molarity? Well, molality has a unique advantage since it deals with the kilograms or mass of the solvent, and that is that it does not change with temperature. So molarity changes with temperature, whereas molality does not. Now, why does molarity change with temperature? Well, molarity is a volume of solution. Volumes change with temperature. Because density changes with temperature, volume also changes with temperature. Normally, the volume of a solution will increase as you increase the temperature. Many times, that's a fairly minimal amount, but in some cases, this could be important. But since the mass of a solution is completely independent of the temperature, the molality is unaffected by temperature changes. And that is one thing that makes it so important and useful as a unit of concentration. So if we have mass units and we have mole units, then the logical next step is we need to know how to convert between mass units and mole units. And really the key factor here is the molar mass. If we're gonna convert between mass and mole units, we're gonna to need to use molar mass or molar masses somewhere in that process. So let's do a couple examples. First, let's say that commercially available concentrated nitric acid, that's HNO3, is a 68% solution by mass in water. And the solution has a density of 1.51 grams per milliliter. So what is the concentration of this solution in molarity? So we're given a mass percent and we're given a density and we have to go to molarity, which is, so we're going from mass percent, remember that's mass, of solute divided by mass of solution times 100%. And then we're going to units of moles per liter. So I have mass of solute and I have to, so if, if I take each part and treat it separately, I have the numerator, treat that separately from the denominator. So I have mass of solute and I need to go to moles of solute. To do that, I can use the molar mass of HNO3. And then the bottom I have mass of solution, and I need to go to volume of solution. Well, thankfully, I've been given the density of the solution. That is something that allows me to go from a mass to a volume. So let's look at this first. 68% is 68 grams over a 100 gram sample. So uh, in this case, if it's 68%, that's 68 uh, over a sum of 100, so if 68 grams of that is HNO3, then 32 grams of that must be water times 100%. And so then I can take that 68 grams on top and convert that to moles by using the molar mass. And then I can take the 100 gram solution, which is really the sum of this uh, denominator up here. I didn't need to write it out as two pieces. I could have just written the 100 grams of solution. I didn't need in this case to specify, but because 68 grams of that, is, because the solution is mass of solute plus mass of solvent, and I know that my solute is 68 grams, then I can know that my water must be 32 grams. But here I take that 100 grams of solution and I take and divide by the density to convert that to milliliters or a volume and then convert that volume to liters. Now I have moles on top and I have liters. So I simply take the moles divided by the liters and that will get me my molarity as 16.3 molar. So that's one way of going between the units. Let's do another example. So calculate the molality of lead 2 plus in a 25 part per million aqueous solution of lead nitrate. So where do we start with this? Well, we always start with what we're given, 25 parts per million. 
So first, let's when, when we when we treat this, we've got parts per million, and we're not given a mass of solution. We're not given a volume. But what I can do first is just start, and let's just assume that I have a 100 gram solution, and that will allow me to get mass of the lead nitrate using the parts per million. And then from there, I can, I, I can work from there. And I don't have to assume a 100 gram solution. I could assume a 1 million gram or, or just a one gram solution or a five gram. It doesn't matter what it is. I just need to assume some total mass for the solution and the rest of the pieces will work themselves out. So assume a 100 gram solution. So if parts per million is mass of lead, nit of lead nitrate over mass of the solution times 10 to the sixth, then I know that my solution is 100 grams, and I know my parts per million, that's 25 parts per million. I, the thing I don't know is the mass of lead nitrate, so I rearrange to solve for that. I get 25 parts per million times 100 grams divided by the 10 to the sixth, and I come out with mass of lead nitrate as 0 0.0025 grams. So now I know grams of lead nitrate, what I need to do is I need to go to from, I need to take grams of lead nitrate, I need to convert that to moles. I will also need to figure out of the entire 100 gram solution, how much of that is the solvent, because remember this uh, molality deals with the kilograms of solvent. So let's see how we would take uh, and work from here. So if the mass of lead nitrate is 0 0.0025 grams, then the mass of water in the solution must be just 100 grams minus that, or 99.9975 grams. If we didn't write everything out, if we followed significant figure rules, um, if this was 100.0 grams, we would have to round off. But here, we'll just carry everything through. So 99.9975 grams is really uh, 0 0.0999975 kilograms. So now I have the kilograms of solvent. The last thing I need is the moles of solute. So here I have mass of lead nitrate. Let's convert that to moles. So take the mass, divide by the molar mass to get me to moles of lead nitrate. Now I haven't been asked specifically for moles of lead nitrate. I've been asked for moles of lead two plus. Well, now that I have moles of lead nitrate, let's look at the molar relationship between lead nitrate and the amount of lead two plus that would be generated from that. I can see that if I dissolve lead nitrate in solution, I'm going to get one mole of lead 2 plus for every one mole of lead nitrate. So what I really have is 9.29 times 10 to the minus 6 moles of lead 2 plus. So now I have moles of the solute that I'm interested in, and I have kilograms of solvent. So I simply ratio those, and what I come out with is 9.25 or 9.29 times 10 to the minus 5th molal as the final molality of this solution. So just looking at that exponent, you could see why it might be more useful to have a parts per million unit where we have just that value is 25 versus a molality or a molarity unit where I have an exponent of 10 to the minus five. But this is how we deal with units of concentration in, solution, in solutions, whether they be aqueous solutions or non-aqueous solutions.